So it's all in the prep. So we take, depending on the substrate we're working with, I've got, uh, I've got a different process for, for every substrate possible. Plastic has different, there's, there's so many different plastics out there and they all have a different, they have a different preparation method. Metals, uh, aluminum, aluminum is tougher to work with than say steel. Uh, aluminum is one of the porous metals out there and it's a pain in the ass. Um, simply because it's a magnet for oil, dirt, and then you see something, all those you see back there behind you, there's a bunch of leaders sitting on it. They've all been degreased. Um, there, it's, because it's such a porous material, you've got to get it out. Because what happens is, is when you put primer and stuff, the primer is actually draw the crap out of the aluminum. And so if you don't get it all out beforehand, it rips all your stuff off. So <coughs> it doesn't matter how pretty it looks. All the work goes into the prep. The actual dipping, the final unit to the uh, uh, to the object we're working with, under three minutes. Under three minutes. From the time I cut the film, place it on the tank, push the button, dip, and walk it over to a rinse station, three minutes tops. What about yeah. what happened there? Well, that got all that shit out of there. No, it's when when we hit the when we hit the filter, it'll oh, okay. the thing, it'll just dry it all out. Um, and there, you'll see the ink is just coming up. You'll see the ink underneath, but you got to remember that you've got the. This is the surface we're adhering to, so it's on top of all of that. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the films underneath the ink's on top, and so it's it's not a big deal. Um, but three minutes. So everything goes into the prep. Um, as far as prep goes, we do everything from. Uh, so if, if somebody brings something. We just want it in paint ready state, uh, meaning that it's clean, there's no mud all over it, um, there's kind of gas work on it, uh, it's been cleaned up. And then what we do is we just put it through our process and uh, right through the whole, the whole stage. Um, <coughs> get to where I am here. Uh, so the film goes on the tank, so that little piece of film we're putting on, we lay that on the tank, and what happens is it dissolves. It dissolves into water, it kind of turns into I don't want to say an oily substance, but it's uh, it's almost like a liquid substance where it's, it's suspended there. It's holding the ink pretty much in shape. The ink is still uh, dehydrated at that point. As soon as I hit it with the activator, the, the ink turns to liquid. And as soon as it turns to liquid, it goes like this. So this tank has dams on it. Um, there's this one here that I just this way. I have other ones that that I can adjust to, to whatever size I'm working with. Um, we're not going to use those tonight. I'm not going to pay for it. Um, uh, I've been dipping long enough. We're going to let it go wherever the hell it wants to go. We're just going to dip. Um, and so you, you contain it all, you spray it. Now that ink is sitting there, and it's liquid. And then figure out the velocity and the angle that i got to go into the water uh, to make sure that I get uh, the ink where I want it to go. The other thing that, that um, I'm concerned about when I do a dip is distortion. Because I'm working with liquid, a liquid ink sitting there. And you can distort it too much. And there's, there's always a certain amount of distortion, but there's a point where it's acceptable and not acceptable. And uh, so we, we try and minimize the distortion on every dip. Um, <coughs> once, it's out of the, once it's in the water, you'll see me shake it a bit. All I'm doing is just clearing any of the old ink or the ink residue away um, and then pull it out. And there's still some of that, the, the PVA on it. Um, we take it over and we just rinse it off. It just gets rinsed off. Um, and it foams up kind of like a dish soap and it's, it's done. Uh, after that, the piece is allowed to dry. Uh, it then goes back into our booth and you get the top coat on it. And it depends. Like I've done stuff where um, you, know, you, you dip it and you're done. I'd say 90% of the stuff is top coated in some form of top coat. Um, <coughs> I use everything from automotive urethane, high-end automotive urethane. Uh, I like them because it, it pulls the, the gloss from the dead flat to a high gloss. Uh, I use high-end lacquers for pump 
full stop. We have also been self registered as a Catholic. Uh, we pretty much, yeah, we focus on cultural stuff. Um, anything that um, we use that's, that's unique in grip, I've got another product that's called Cobra Grip. Uh, it's a European grip product as well, but it's got a nice velvety rubbery feel to it. And uh, I put that on and I do this, some industrial applications, but I put it on all, all, all the buttons that I do. I do a lot of um, love socks, and so we put it on there. I mean, it, it, the thing is, like, how I mean, this is just a, just a sweet, sweet, gritty feel if you're hunting in cold and wet weather. It's a pretty good way to grab the grip. And, and then after that, I think you're going to need to look at it. Are there any questions? Sometimes it can't get in there in the frame in one dip, so I'll mask off, I'll dip, I'll remask and dip again. Um, it takes a little thing to make it really make it too dip. But if you look at there's a wheel right by the front door there, and if you get by it, you'll see where the um, where the wheel uh, lugs are. Um, it just goes right into every unit in the frame. So um, it's pretty If I do, is an event. Guaranteed. Right? If when I go and I push that into the tank and it's only second, everything can go right or it can go horribly wrong and it's it's done. And so every day and, and I can spend I can spend hours prepping something for a single tip. And man, you gotta get on the game. And there are days where I just walk in. Um, 